The information in this video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat any specific medical condition. Use of this information is not a substitute for advice from your physician or therapist. So why do these develop again? Again, because of some type of repetitive movement, some type of posture persistence, some type of injury, some type of trauma that hasn't fully healed. The brain might find one problem in part of the kinetic chain, and it may then start to over recruit another aspect of that same kinetic chain in order to compensate, to try to make that one particular kinetic chain as efficient as possible. It's not gonna be as efficient as it was uh, before the injury or before the problem began, but it's gonna do its best. Or it might start to adapt and recruit another of these uh, kinetic chain lines to compensate for, um, for the one that's not working well, or it could be doing both. So this becomes a complexity because the brain is very adaptive and it can start to change these fascial patterns without any symptoms, without any pain. It just does it in order for you to maintain good breathing, posture, and balance, and stay upright when walking. The problem occurs that these adaptations make the muscles and fascias and joints move with less efficiency, and it takes more effort to do the same movement, which then leads to muscle imbalance, which leads to muscle fatigue, and eventually can lead to pain. So the pain that you're experiencing may not have developed because of one thing that you know, because a lot of my patients can't even recall what they did wrong, because they didn't do anything wrong. It actually could be merely the accumulation of muscle imbalance and muscle fatigue that finally shows itself as pain and discomfort and some type of burning and, and aches that go all over the place. But one of the big problems is gravity. So gravity is quite a big force that tends to pull us forward particularly because the way our spine is shaped and the force generated by the anterior fascia lines, it's actually easy to be bent forward. So these posterior chain lines are of particular importance for us to be strengthening and mobilizing, and it's important for us to be stretching and mobilizing the anterior lines so that there's a much better uh, uh, efficiency for posture maintaining, for deep breathing, and so we can maintain our balance. So how do we identify these dysfunctional kinetic chain patterns? Unfortunately, modern medicine has all but ignored the importance of these fascial chains. So MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays, ultrasounds, they don't really appreciate the kinetic chain movements. But that's okay, we can do some simple fundamental movements and any difficulty doing those fundamental movements is a clue that there's a problem in the kinetic chain system. And because these kinetic chains overlap with each other neurologically, and they often share muscles, we don't necessarily do just one type of kinetic chain exercise, we just want to exercise them all. Due to the importance of the fascial systems, the mobility and exercise sequences on drrobrehab.com are designed to maximize your fascial health.